Welcome to AtlantaJewishNews.com. I'm Marcy Levinson Brooks, and I'm here to talk to Abe Shear and Philip Skinner about a trip to Israel they took. But I want to let you know first, this segment is brought to you by Protection Concepts. No landline, no problem. Protection Concepts, your choice for home security. So welcome, guys. How are you today? Great. I'm doing well, thank you. Welcome to you. Well, I'm here because Abe and Phil took a recent trip to Israel and you are a part of making business connections in Israel. You're with Arnold Golden Gregory, and this is an opportunity for American businesses to work with Israeli businesses as well. How do you bridge that gap, uh, the gap as far as like the oceans? How do you, are you traveling back and forth to Israel? Are the Israelis coming here? Tell us a little bit about what you do, and uh, Phil, if you'd like to start. Sure. Well, uh, really about four or five years ago, we began an initiative to try to build bridges between here and Israel for primarily focusing on real estate business and real estate investments with investors from Israel trying to do business in the United States. And, you know, if you fast forward from that concept five years ago to now, we've made quite a few trips. I've made four trips personally. Uh, Abe has made eight trips. One of our other attorneys, who is an Israeli attorney, uh, Shelly Rabinovich, has been eight, eight, or, nine eight or nine times as well. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's the modus has been to try to just get there, meet people sort of from the top down in the business community in Israel, and find out what their needs and wants are for business here in the United States. Yeah, and I will say, we, we had a, a terrific opportunity because Shelly, uh, being an Israeli attorney, did know a lot of people, so we originally went and met people that Shelly knew. Uh, Shelly is also a real estate attorney, so that we were focused on, on real estate. But what we found five years ago, Delta was not flying directly to Israel. Um, but there were a lot of Israeli companies that are in Atlanta. There were 50 Israeli companies that are in Atlanta. And the American Israel Chamber has done a terrific job of working with those companies. So there are a lot of Israelis that are here. Um, fast forward five years later, Delta has been flying back and forth for years. Uh, the American Israel Chamber is still doing great. There's a great recognition on the southeast. So there's a lot of interest in both the real estate market now in the United States from Israeli investors in the United States. And so too, there's a lot of interest in the southeast because the experience, I think, that the Israelis and the Israeli companies have had in this region, for lots of reasons, has been very, very uh, supportive. Um, it's easy not only to fly to from Israel, but most of the Israeli companies that are here also travel from here. There's a lot of consulting companies. There's a lot of high-tech companies. Um, and with the intellectual capital that is in Atlanta and the ease of getting both here from Israel and the ease of getting from here to almost anywhere, that has meant that this has been a very, very important destination for the Israeli companies, um, not just real estate companies, but in, in uh, uh, medical products, high-tech, uh, real estate products. How has the American economy that seems to be on a downhill slide. How has that affected relations with these Israeli companies? Well, I would say that uh, when we began this effort five years ago, we had, I, I think what we, we think thought then and believe now was a really good idea, but maybe the timing wasn't exactly right then. Um, at that point, in the last first two or three years of this, this whole um, effort, prices in the United States were going up on commercial real estate. They were overheated. Um, the shekel versus the dollar was sort of disadvantageous for the Israeli investor. Those two circumstances have really flip-flopped now over the last two years. Uh, prices in the U.S. have gone down dramatically. The shekel has risen against the dollar, and that makes the timing right for the kind of investments that we've been talking to the Israelis about for the last four or five years. And, and I think that what happened in the intervening time is that we had made a decision when we went uh, five years ago that we would go back regularly. And uh, originally we would say we'll be back in six months or eight months, and they went, we've heard that before. Well, now we don't need to tell them that we'll be back because we've been back so many times. So we did the relationship building at a time probably that the market was not so good. Interestingly, not only has our market gotten worse, but their market hasn't suffered nearly as much. Um, there are a lot of uh, interesting but time-consuming reasons to explain that. but. They don't have they don't have a subprime problem because in Israeli real estate you have to put so much more equity into any deal in the first place that even if the valuations were going down 
uh, essentially the, the lenders would still be secure in their asset. So the Israelis are still pretty much in business, and while their market is not as good as it was two or three years ago, it's significantly better right now than it is in the United States, and they want to use those capital, those capital dollars that they have um, and invest in the United States. And I will say, interestingly, that, that when we were there two weeks ago, and when you look out the window and land, there are not nearly as many cranes moving around. In Israel, there are a lot of cranes moving around. Uh, they're building in very in different categories. They're building in apartments and condominiums. They're building in hospitals and museums. Um, and they still are building, believe it or not, an office building. So there's a lot going on in and around Tel Aviv and the, and the, and the Diamond Center nearby in Ramadan and areas like that. Now, with Arnold Golden Gregory not being a specifically Jewish law firm, what is your interest in Norseville as well in doing this American and Israeli business cooperation? Well, well the initiative, I think, the initiative started uh, strictly as a, as a business initiative. I think that one of the great things about our firm is, is that when we see an opportunity, we are able to try to capture it. Uh, when Shelley came, she had a very interesting opportunity because we were able to bridge uh, um, an entire sort of population by being able to introduce ourselves to the population very easy because we had someone here that just knew so many people. So from a business initiative, it made great sense. The only interesting part about it really was that it was so far away. But the firm has a long-standing cross-border uh, practice. I mean, we are very active in, in Israel, of course, but we're active in Germany, we're active in Korea, we're active in China, we're active in Russia. Um, so there are a number of markets that, that we have a lot that we are that we are active on internationally. And in fact, our cross-border international practice really is the largest team in the firm. And, and the Israel team that we that we work in is, is simply a, 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 a sub-part of a, of a very large overall team. But if you step back and just ask why Israel, the initial impetus was Shelley, a seven-year lawyer at that time from Israel, joining us and having great resources to, we could capitalize on. But we've learned from the Israeli experience that we can take that model and working with the group called the International Bar Association, um, which is, as, it, as its name implies, a membership group of attorneys from around the world, we found we've been able to build similar bridges with, with law firms in other countries around the world, and we think we can make this model replicate itself. You can't be all things to all people, um, so we're going to focus on a number of countries, but not everywhere, and uh, hopefully we can you know, keep working on this and, and prove it uh, again and again to be a successful model. And I think picking up on what Phil says, I mean, the consumer today, the legal consumer, the medical consumer, wants specialists. I mean, we are, we are becoming a world of specialists. So the idea that we had, similar to our German practice, is that we could go and make a big difference. We could really brand ourselves um, in Israel as being uh, fully integrated in their process, being a great, well-known resource. Not just we go there one year and we go somewhere else one year and we go somewhere else another year. So we, so we have great depth and great commitment to that. But we have great depth and commitment to other countries. It's very much the way we practice law here. We've got um, real depth in certain areas. Real estate, we have great depth. In areas like health care, we have great depth. In, and, and it's very similar to the business model we have here, which is product-driven. And, and in fact, the, the going back and forth to Israel is a, is a market, it's a product, it's, it's something where, where depth does matter, as opposed to just great breadth. You say, by the way, I put my toe in the sea, and I was there, that's really not a market, that's, a, that's sort of a visit.